I have been involved in ranching virtually all of my life to some degree. The first several years was just as a kid being able to go in the summer and play cowboy and go along with my, my dad who worked with us, was also active in the ranch. And then some of our employees that were so gracious and patient with me as a little kid getting in the way all the time. But um, So I started out on the ranch and I'm still here and I am so thankful to still be involved in the ranching. Ranching um, has changed so much over the years. From back in those days, everybody just had their cattle and they ran wherever. And then when the fencing laws came into effect and um, because of the fever tick and the road laws and some other um, factors that were involved in that, um, people who got their own land and had to secure it with fence, be able to identify their cattle. And so I guess that's when the ranching industry was really birthed in Florida. I grew up on this ranch and working every summer with my dad and my cousins, and it was more work than fun. I decided to go to college, get an education, had no plans of returning back to the ranch until um, the ranch started pursuing conservation easements. And that really got me excited about coming back to the ranch. I felt like I had a role to play in helping put conservation easements on our ranch. One of the misconceptions of women in the ranching industry is that they are at home taking care of babies, making meals for the men in the field. You have women that are in the pens, working the cattle, working out in the field, running feed trucks, or you have some women that are in the office doing the books and running the back end of the company. Well, here at Buck Island Ranch, we're a little unique in that we do have a science staff here. Uh, they're they're agroecologists, so they're looking at the natural environment, and then, of course we, uh, operations side, run all the operations of cattle, sod, and anything to work the land. We look at it more in a systems approach. We don't look at it as managing land and animals. We look at it from the water all the way to the land to the cattle. So we're trying to tie the system together, saying we want to produce more cattle. We want to look at the environment and the natural surroundings. The first cattle come to Florida in 1521. Ponce de Leon dropped them off on the shores of Punta Rasa, Punta Gorda area today. So the cattle have thrived for almost 500 years. 21.6 million people in the state of Florida today. A thousand people a day moving in. Cattle grazing is probably the best use for this land via development. And uh, the wetness, you know, we've managed through it. When it gets wet, we just move our cattle around. We like to think that we're the best land use other than concrete and asphalt. When most people think of Florida, they think of beaches, they think of resorts, they think of fishing. The truth of it is though, is our, our entire state revolves around agriculture. Majority of the cows are born here and shipped out of state to be fed. A lot of our sugar is farmed here for the whole United States. There's a lot of crops that are grown at certain times of year that can't be grown elsewhere. So it's often overlooked the value of having these natural resources here in our state. People usually don't see. This is our Cheney Brothers Puna Gorda facility. We just built this a few years back. Uh, we receive during the day and we ship all night. During the day, everything you see here is replenishing what went out the previous night before. Typically, in most of our warehouses, we have anywhere between 15 to 17,000 stock SKUs to service your basic food service type locations, your restaurants, your hotels. Everything here you see is coming in. This is inbound gets received and put away and replenishes what was taken the night before. It's a circle. We just keep bringing stuff in and shipping stuff out. Looking back just the course of the past 20 or 40 years and the changes we've seen as a result of population increase, it's staggering to think that just by the end of my lifetime, we could see the end of agriculture within our state. With the support of Fresh from Florida and partnerships like the Florida Cattle Ranchers, Cheney Brothers is in the process of developing and implementing conservation funding programs designed to protect the remaining agricultural land resources for wildlife, water quality, and food production. Every time a consumer purchases Florida Cattle Ranchers beef, a percentage of those profits goes to supporting conservation efforts through the purchase of agricultural easements.
which allows the development rights to be purchased from farmers and ranchers so that those lands are guaranteed to permanently remain as they are today and ensure a sustainable future for Florida. Cheney Brothers is well known for our high quality products and that is what Florida Cattle Ranchers is. We look forward to helping make Florida beef grow and become successful and at the same time helping preserve a legacy heritage. Our mother started a restaurant a little over 20 years ago uh, here in Brooksville called Mally Kyla's Cafe. That's where uh, we were introduced to the, to the restaurant business and uh, how, how I say we got blessed with a curse. From there, my brother went to culinary school up in uh, New England. I uh, went off to college, came back, and uh, bought a hot dog stand here in Brooksville, ran that for eight years, and then me and my brother came together and started the Florida Cracker Kitchen. Now programs like Florida Cattle Ranchers, otherwise known as FCR, are very key to who we are and what we're doing. People ask, is your beef from Florida? We've always to say, no, it's not. There's really not a source for us to get beef from Florida that can keep up with our volume that we needed to be sustainable. And then one day, uh, I was talking to Cheney Simmons from Cheney Brothers. He walks in and we start talking about it. And I mentioned something about, you know, getting beef from Florida. Well, he goes, well, we just started a new program with FCR, Florida Cattle Ranchers, and we might be able to do this. And after a couple months of talking, it, was, it came to fruition. Bringing FCR into the Florida Cracker, it's a natural marriage because what the term Florida Cracker means and who we are is exactly who Florida Cattle Ranchers are. They are part of the reason we started what we're doing. One of my goals with Florida Cattle Ranchers and our partnership is to help bring awareness to the importance of Florida agriculture, as well as preserving our ability to grow and produce food within our state. At Chain Brothers, our business is highly dependent on Florida's agricultural industries. Without them, certain times of the year, there wouldn't be any fresh produce or vegetables. Yet each year, thousands of acres of farms and ranch lands continue to be converted to development. Over time, thousands turn into millions, and that is the path we're headed. Florida would not be the beautiful place it is now if we did not have a ranching industry. The beautiful countryside that we're able to see when we're driving down the road would virtually be non-existent. Most of the cattlemen are such good stewards um, that we make sure that doesn't happen and the cattle themselves make sure that doesn't happen. And there has been science to prove that cattle is one of the best um, conservation tools there is. And, um, and I think if we remove them, that um, the, the beauty of our state would be removed with it also. The importance of the Florida cattle industry is very far reaching. First and foremost, we're great protein producers, great food producers for the public and for the consumer. And we do a great job of that. And it's something that's, that is very important. We're good for the environment. The cattlemen are very much aware and attuned to the needs of the environment. And we try to be very careful in how we develop our land and we don't over, try not to over develop the land and I'm not talking about commercial development I'm talking about developing the land for the cattle and clearing the land and and planting it imp improved grasses and those kind of things we still do that but we try very hard not to overdo it by not overdoing it's the only way that we can keep the balance um, between the cattle and the wildlife and we feel like that's part of our stewardship responsibility as stewards of this land and of these great gifts that we're allowed to enjoy that we manage them properly and do what we can to make sure we improve those situations rather than take away from them. I've never known um, anything but ranching and if the Lord's willing I'll still be able to say that as long as I'm here. <laughs>